try there. We'll see how long I get away with wearing these earrings. The kitties are asleep right now, so maybe I can get this journal read into the record. Okay, this is from 3-3. Three, three. First one of that day. Goodness, kismet. Mayan day was 10 deer. I just had one of the nicest experiences watching a, a wonderful interview of someone who had both stage four cancer and a wonderful NDE or near-death experience that quite transformed her life. She seemed able to say so many things that I have often tried to express and say them so beautifully that I come to the journal to share her video with you. She's got a book out about it, which I haven't yet read, but I may do that as well. Maybe we can do a lot toward our migration into higher consciousness by reviewing some of the NDE stories that so many are sharing these days. I've made a playlist uh, of them, and uh, there's a link for that, as well as her video in the uh, scribe transcript. What was once a terribly taboo topic is no longer so. So we must be moving in the right direction, at least in some ways, in spite of the media's attempt to keep us fearful, anxious, angry, and for ever feeling not quite good enough in this or that way. Here's the thing though, I've found that even in this thing of the NDE, many people are deceived. Not most of them, but some of them are deceptions. And this really surprised me but I found that some of those, even ones who had extensive experiences on the other side, were not in company of the angels or light beings they thought they were, but rather in the company of a bunch of imposters. And there are even some pastors who fit into this group. I'll um, I'll see if I can go back and find a link or two to add to show you what I mean. It's rather sad, isn't it, the way mankind has been so endlessly and seemingly pretty much universally deceived? We get so tired of it, I know, and we're even tempted to anger as well. Try as we might, it can seem so terribly Hard to connect with real truth. In this world as it is today, sometimes truth seems light years away. So what can we do? Well, good question. Gosh, have I got any answers? Well, let's see if heart does. And I say parenthetically. And I've got to tell you, I really didn't expect this journal to go off in this direction. Okay, good news first. You are a great and marvelous being of pure and beautiful light. You are certainly divine or a part of or one with the divine if you prefer it expressed like that. One way or another, you are that and much will be accomplished all on its own once you choose to accept your native being as divine. Next, proceeding from there, you can find truth, but it's not in this world. Instead, you can find it in heart. Know that when you go into heart, you exit the world. You do. You leave it completely behind. Yes, you can still perceive it, but nonetheless, you've gone beyond. When you enter your own kingdom of heart, 
object or simply heart space or the now or centered, whatever you call it, you actually step outside of both time and space. You enter a realm that is divine, simply said. My choice has been to simply live the whole of my life from a place centered in heart, so I can tell you that this can be done. It is not at all impossible, though it does require a good deal of stubborn persistence or determination and a real openness. I'm sure many of us have these qualities in excess just now, and so we are very well equipped to enter within. So center in heart, for it's the best way to look at the difficult things of life and still keep your peace. Now, I want to say, um, I said that I have lived the whole of my life from a place centered in heart. Well, you know, that's ultimately true for all of us. We're all there. We're all that. And so on. I, I didn't mean to imply that I got it together early on in life. I, I've always been a lover of, of the divine, but it's only been these last three or four years where things really came together for me and I got any good at this being in heart thing. Okay, so why is there so much deception seemingly everywhere we look? How can it be that even out of the body in an NDE, we can still be deceived? What is acting here and just as importantly, what should we do? First step, after entering heart, of course, is to process our fear. Every bit of fear and anger we have about life, about anything, works against us. It not only robs us of our peace, but it acts like a magnet drawing in those very things we seek to escape. If people could only see this clearly and calmly, they would know it is mandatory to process all fear. Fear is worse than cancer, and it will often bring cancer on. And it's so much fun not to be carting it around anymore. Okay, how can I share this? How can I help people see that there really is no world out there? That there really is no out there is the case. How open are you? If you can't accept this yet, that's fine but do allow for the possibility that it's true. And that's a good first step. All there is, each one will find out in the end, is the self, capital S. All that seems to be the world and what fills it is the creation of mind, projected as that, whatever it is. Yes, we also haven't given the mind its due praise for how awesomely powerful it is. This harks back to the way everyone commonly discounts the self, feeling basically worthless. This has got to be seen, for until we see it, it cannot be healed. So, reminders to self, place them everywhere that say, you are a magnificent divine being. We're in heart, and we've accepted that we're wrong if we think we're anything but magnificent and divine. Tune into it. You don't have to create it. You don't have to find it. It's already there. You don't have to earn it. None of that. It's just shifting and tuning in, like changing the dial on the station. 
on the radio. Knowing this, suddenly our fear doesn't seem to make very much sense, does it? What need has a divine being to fear anything? Be in heart. Let the interior dissonance of this be seen and felt. The discomfort of it will be the sandpaper, the goad to make the necessary changes. Be self-aware. Okay, now, are you ready for the next step? If not, just take a short break to give what you've taken in so far time to settle, to find its place inside. When you feel calm and ready, here's the next step. I want you to stop thinking of the world and everything that's in it as being real and as being anything external to yourself. Let it melt away. Be in heart. Pull your focus back into heart and keep it there. Let your ray of attention be ever inward focused, no longer outward focused like almost everyone else. Remember, those people are literally not real. They do not exist. Stick to heart and ignore any thoughts around this. Just be in heart and be still. Let's take a breather here. I'm not asking you to accept a single thing that I say. Accept what you can, what works for you. As long as you stick to heart, avoiding mind as much as possible, then you're in good shape to at least be open to what is offered here. Anything that just doesn't work for you yet, all I ask is that you allow it to simply be possible. And you can do that if you choose. Keep all of your power for yourself. Don't give any of it away, not even to me. Okay, now, if the world and its people and things aren't real, then what are they? Are you ready for this? They are you conversing with you. They are an ongoing conversation you're having with Source. They are you talking to you, all of it, every single thing and all that happens especially right around your avatar, your body-mind there, is strictly you interacting with you, including everything, the dog, the cat, the table, the tree, the air. Yes, I know it's a lot to take in. You can do it, though. Take your time. You're talking with you, including every word that's coming out of my mouth. These eyes through which I hoped to see God are the eyes through which God sees me. Let that mind be good and pretzeled and leave it that way. Stay in heart. You're talking with you. That's all it is and all it's ever been. Thinking of it as a conversation with God or Source may be easier at first, so try that. Let your heart find what's comfortable for you. To keep mind quiet, let's stick with saying everything right around you. Everything in your personal experience is this conversation with Source. If we leave the rest of the world and cosmos out of it for now, that will likely be easier for mind to accept. So your job, if you take it on, is to begin seeing everything that happens around you as something that's speaking to you. Every breeze, 
every flower, every one you see, all of it as you or source conversing with you. Realize then that projection is a much greater thing than most of us realize. We literally project a whole world. That's at least partly because we're divine, which means we're able to do that. Do you see how important it is to acknowledge your innate divinity here? Without that, it's nearly impossible to take this as the next step, as any step. Now that your vision is being educated to this extent, it's time for a little self-reminder that you are not this body, this mind that you're working with here. It's time to begin more and more to see this as your avatar in the big game, your part in the grand drama that is 3D life. As a little crutch to help this along, do recall that this isn't your only lifetime. You've got lots of bodies. Remember, too, that you leave the body every night in sleep and at the close of every embodiment, you're more than familiar with the other side you only forgot, but the memory is there. Keep reminding the self, I am more than human, much more. I am divine. Do whatever it takes to get this re-education process going and keep it going so that you may abandon all the phony, lying, deceitful programming that you couldn't help but take on as you grew. As you remember your own divinity, this task and every other one won't seem so onerous, so difficult anymore. After all, what is this or that or whatever to a divine one, a little G God? That's right, it's nothing. Be sensitive to you. I think I may need to stop here as I don't want to overload you. It doesn't pay to take on too much too fast, you know. This isn't something you can force on the self. Your self, capital S, knows just how fast she can take this stuff in and make the necessary changes help you make them. And it won't be at all that comfortable a process either. A lot of the time, you've got some major adjustments to make, and in making them, you'll be brought face to face with a whole lot of stuff that I'm sure you'd rather not deal with. Well, as soon as a thought like that crops up, stop it. Stop it right there, do a freeze frame, and just take a look. Just who is this you who would rather not deal with something? Is this the real you, the divine being? Or is it perhaps the mind? Hello. Again and again, you will find mind is both a troublemaker and at the root of every difficulty that crops up. So just watch for it. Be alert. As soon as you feel any discomfort at all, just stop and take a good look. Get a cup of tea or something. Find a way to unwind and relax so you can simply observe. This moment of spotting the discomfort is actually a lovely gift. What kind? Why, the kind that is the key to helping you step back from the avatar and step into the real self and identify with that. The real self doesn't get feelings of discomfort like that. The real self points them out to you. But 
They are being experienced by, guess what? Uh-huh, the mind. If you're anything like normal, then your mind is currently in charge of you. Well, that just won't work anymore. Not with you on your way out of here, right? How can you be about ascending when you're being bossed around by the mind? Mm -mm. Cart before the horse. So these moments of com discomfort, these moments of discomfort are ideal times to step back and observe mind at work giving you some kind of hard time or another. As you remember to remind yourself who you really are, the divine being, you'll get to witness the discomfort fade away into a sort of quiet joy. Take that in, a quiet joy. What is acting here and how can that be? That is you merging into the greater you and that joy is your normal state of being yeah the one you forgot all about that's okay though you'll be remembering and experiencing that more and more i simply must stop now before i overload you it need not be overwhelming at all just don't be in any sort of rush. There's no need, for you won't be able to force higher self to go at a pace that he doesn't choose anyway. You'll find there's a sort of a right pace to things that you'll somehow just begin to tune into. It won't be long before you've got the feel of it. Just stick to heart, for that's where you're sensing that. And that's where it originates, as do all the other good feelings that arise. You may want to go over the part of this journal that shows you how to unwrap the lovely gift contained within the feelings of discomfort that come up. Look and see how that progresses and what are the keys to ha help with the unwrapping. You begin with something that looks much like a punch in the nose or something equally unpleasant, only to discover it's a blessing in disguise. It is simply vital to be disidentifying from your avatar and identifying with the real self, the one who's divine. It's a really important key. So remember, you are divine. And don't forget to enjoy everything. Just know that you can. That's how the Divine One takes it all in. This is heart vision being born. Heart-centered vision is alive and well within you. Only you've been programmed not to know or even imagine it exists. Welcome to the deprogramming that will clear every obstacle to your divinity manifesting right here, right now. Next time we'll take up why there's so much deception everywhere and what to do about it. And gosh, here I thought this was going to be a nice sharing of Murjani's NDE and her beautiful way of expressing that. Oh well, even when I think I know what I'm going to journal, it just isn't so. It's so very nice not to be attached to knowing a thing, because I don't. Good day.